Today I'm just going to take you into the greenhouse and show you the shelves that I did that are DIY friendly and budget friendly. Evening guys, what started out as a beautiful sunny day turned to kind of a cloudy overcast day that threatened to rain and now we're back to beautiful and sunny. So I thought I would do the video I was planning to do which is showing you how I did my DIY very budget friendly greenhouse shelves in case you wanted to do something similar in your greenhouse. It did really help me expand the amount of plants I could get into that greenhouse size which is very beneficial for me because I underestimated the size of greenhouse I needed. It turns out 10 by 20 is not big enough for me. So lesson to me, now I know, and that's good to know because when I do my permanent greenhouse, I'll know that I need a significantly sized one. So we're just gonna go show you what I did really quick. And it is super simple. If you haven't seen the video of me taking down all of these garden blocks, these garden blocks. These are what I used as the pillars for each shelf, and I'll show you what I mean. So what I did for these super simple and very easy DIY shelves was I used the stones that we had around our garden bed that I had removed so that we could rework the area in the spring. We just had them all on pallets, and so we had plenty of these to spare, and I ended up using these as the pillars for each shelf, the supports. And then we had spare wood because we are renovating our house, so spare wood is just always around our house. All these boards are just laying around, not getting used. And so I used these as the shelves themselves, and I was able to provide different levels. So over here I have four stones, on the other side I have three stones, and it was a really easy way to get some elevation for some of my plants and be able to fit more so that there could be two tiers of them. So this is the three block high shelves on the other side and I chose to do these slightly shorter because I had slightly shorter plants underneath whereas on the other side we had some taller plants underneath. Something important to notice is that you want to make sure that your plants are not touching the outside materials. So I try to make sure that my plants are not touching the plastic or the metal poles because that will conduct the cold a lot better and that will potentially cause some frost damage to your plants even though they are in the greenhouse. So that's just something to note and pay attention to as you arrange your plant. Another trick in the same vein is any plants that were cascading over, I chose to cascade them this way, which does take away some space for myself, but it allows me to have the plants not touch the outside material. So as you can see with this penstemon, it is clearly falling towards the aisle but it is not touching the plastic or the metal bars, and that will help protect it from the elements as the nights get colder. Another important note is that you wanna make sure that you're monitoring your plants, especially the ones that are up on the shelves, because they are not protected or as protected from temperature shifts. So when you have plants on the ground, the ground temperature will keep your plants a little more temperature stable, but the ones up on the shelf do not have that added benefit of the ground temperature, and they are a little more susceptible to the temperature extremes. In a greenhouse, the whole purpose is to kind of provide a buffer, if you will, from them being out in the elements, but it's still possible for them to get some damage if it gets too cold. So just keep an eye on those, and if it starts to show some damage from the cold weather, you can just bring them right back down and put them on the ground. If you watched my greenhouse tour video, you will know that before I put shelves in, there wasn't actually a whole lot of space for me to move around in. I did technically have two aisles to walk in and to water, but they were really narrow and very congested, and putting everything on a shelf or putting half the plants on a shelf opened it up and allowed me to have a much freer movement, which helps when I'm watering because the hose is rather stiff and could knock pots over if they're all tight together. But now there's enough maneuverability for the hose and for me and for the dogs to where we're not all crammed in and causing things to get damaged or um, knocked over in any way. I acknowledge that not everybody may have these garden stones around, but you can do this with almost any material that you might have around your house. You could do it with milk crates. If you tip the milk crates up on end, they could be the support. You have bricks or anything, pavers, anything like that, that you can just stack or tip up on its side to make it tall enough to allow this to support the shelving. 
The other thing to note is you don't want to use a cardboard box. I have seen some people um, suggest that and I imagine that that will break down as it gets wet because you have to water your plants. So you don't want to use anything that's um, porous like cardboard that would allow it to just break down as the season goes on and potentially damage your plants as it collapses. As for the shelf material, I am surprised at how often I see on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist people advertising scraps, usually people who are remodeling their house or doing other large lumber projects, but they have scrap wood, just please come take it listed and you can come and get it and that could be your shelves. And again, it's often free because they just wanna get rid of it and not have to pay to go to the dump. So that's a really good option as well if you don't have it just lying around your house. Thank you for watching today's video. I know it was short and sweet, but I hope it provided some inspiration for you to do some DIY projects in your own garden and your own greenhouse. I have found that I have a lot of materials just lying around that I could use if I just thought outside of the box. And that's always a little bit better than buying new materials that I might not actually use or might not last because a lot of today's materials are lower quality side, we'll say. That's what I've found anyway. So I hope that this has helped you get some ideas, and if it has, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, subscribe down below, let me know in the comments section what your favorite garden or greenhouse DIY projects are, and until next time, I'll see you in the next video. How many times can I do this take? This is, this is not my day for videos, <laughs> not my weekend. On how to DIY, DIY, I have had to re-record this whole weekend. My microphone is going out and I'm having video with no audio.